back to another video, guys. We are, I, well, I am back from my little hiatus that I was on vacation. been taken, and Jerry was on vacation in Chicago, right? Was it yeah, Chicago? Chicago? Chicago. So we're gonna have a cheers to that. I got my Stella. Jerry got a Corona here. Boom. Mm -hmm. Ah, Stella, my favorite bitch. You can't go wrong with her. All right, so today we wanted to talk about power, and in that, I wanted to talk about stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four, because we're constantly being asked questions like, well, what's the difference? Because a lot of new writers ask me, they're like, well, what's, what's the big difference between a stage one and stage two and stage three and it's worth it and blah, blah, blah. So I thought it'd just be a good idea just to talk about it. So we'll start breaking down each one. Uh, we're not going into crazy details, but just the overlook of what yeah. each one is. Um, and then towards the end, we'll talk about something else. And this might lead up to a, another video, so. I, I think that might yes, be the best, definitely, right? Yeah. Um, all right, good. So, stage one. Stage one, we have uh, an exhaust, uh, we have an intake, yes. and we have a tuner. Uh -huh. So, um, both my bikes, well, the Rogue Land has a stage one, the Lowrider S has a stage one, and then the Sporty has only an exhaust and an intake and an air cleaner, so it doesn't have a tuner yet, so it's not full it's stage like one It's like a half-ass stage one, yeah. Right. Um, Jerry Street Glide is a stage four, yeah. so we'll, we'll, we'll get into that more into the video. Um, wait, wait, your night train is what? Stage four also. Stage, damn, dude. It's actually considered like a stage five, because when you start doing forged high compression pistons and everything, it's a little... But it, yeah. Ooh. And your Pan Am, what is it? Stock. We're not gonna say that. <laughs> Stock. <laughs> All right, yeah, so that's a stage one. Uh, you not, not even a stage one. It's well, stage one is that your definition, yeah. Basically. Stage two is basically a stage one plus cam. So you have your intake, you have your exhaust, you have your tuner, and then you have cams and your adjustable push rods. Yeah, you just adjustable push rods, which I'm planning to do to the Lowrider S pretty soon. That's gonna be my winter project. And then eventually we'll work our way into the um, <clears throat> into the Rogue Lab with that uh, same process. Um, I really don't see myself going above that. I, 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 I just don't see the benefit. Mm, that's another discussion for another day. I yeah, I, me personally, just me as the way I ride, I just don't see the benefit, but yeah. That would be a long video, so we'll do that yeah. another day. We'll do um, that. So, all right, so stage three, Stage three, you're gonna get a bigger cylinders, and then you're also gonna have uh, different push, uh, not push, well, push rods are gonna be pistons. from the uh, from the other one, but pistons as well. Yeah, big um, bore. So yeah, so big bore kit, obviously, um, more fuel, more air, uh, more power, obviously. Now, what, what, when it comes to the difference between stage one, stage two, stage three, as far as horsepower and torque, like, exactly, how much power are we talking about in differences? Well, you already described stage three, so we'll go into stage four. Stage four. No, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. Well, no, well that, that's where the power comes in, the power difference. Because I, I, I have an <laughs> example there to use. I, I can tell you exactly how much mm. power difference is. So we'll, we'll say we're there. But I mean, even even from going from a stage one to a stage two, you're what? You're talking about. Well, stage one is going to give you like 15%, maybe? 50% more, yeah. Yeah, stage two, you can get up. When it comes to th horsepower. Yeah, like. 24%, if anything? 25, 30%, depends on the tuner and depends on what you do. And depends what type of cam you use as yes, well. Yes, exactly, so. Because that, that, that's the thing. Um, there, there's so many companies that make so different many cams that each one is going to work tuner, differently. And, and, and the tuner and the, and, all, and the exhaust, it's, if you don't, like, if you use Harley stuff, there's actual, like, like when my stage four, it'll tell you it's forty percent gain over stock. Stage four, yeah. And it has that's hardly. Now, if you do that with another company, like it could be like yeah, it could be like sixty percent. But then you're, you're also kind of running into a little. Yeah, issue. that's another. Yeah, we gotta talk but about. But me that. personally, like I, I've used both my stage ones are Screaming Eagles, and if I do a stage two, I'm I'm gonna just use a Screaming Eagle. I I don't. That's what I have for tuners. I'm yeah. on my Night Train and on my Street Glide. Because obviously my night train's a 99, so when the guy built it, he did the uh, Screaming Eagle, and I don't see any need to change it. I got, you know, 80 horsepower at the rear wheel, 90 pounds of torque on a freaking Evolution engine, 1340. Yeah. So, and on my, the only re the reason I did it on my street glide is because I have a warranty for seven years. So, <laughs> my now, bike's fully warranty. I have a question for you. Um, if you were doing a stage two, would you go with a... Um, 
Torque cam or horsepower cam? Good question. Uh, my sh the kit that came with my Street Glide, I have a horsepower cam. But when I did my stage two on my 2018 Heritage anniversary that I got rid of, I did a torque cam. The Heritage is tuned differently though. Yes. The, the, the Heritage is like, it kind of feels like a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, uh, it's just very, I don't know. Like, it's just, like the power's not there in the Heritage. The Heritage is like. It was there when it did the stage two. I, I, I did the stage two, but if, if you ride a stock Heritage, it's not, nah, yeah, it's not yeah. like riding like a stock Low Rider S or a stock. Um, I think even my stock Fat Boy was quicker. Yeah. It, it's just the way it's tuned. You yeah. Know? They're, they're all tuned differently. And, yeah. um, I mean, it's probably like, you know, it's it's where the power kicks on. I mean, that's like I said, it's another discussion because it, 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 there's where you get the, with the cam, with the with the bigger, with like my stage four, you get the heads and you have the bigger uh, throttle body and bigger injectors. Your power delivery is different mm. in different stages and where it is. All depends on what you want. But well, all right, so here's the thing that with, with these M8s, like M8s really really come alive at those higher RPMs. Yeah. So that's why sometimes, for example, what, when I see people getting torque cams on like an old rider S, it's like, why are you gonna get a torque cam when- Well, these, if you want low end power. No, no, but yeah, but- Some guys don't go over 85 no, miles an no, hour. Hold on, but th these, these bikes are ready from the get, they're extremely torquey at those yeah. low RPMs, extremely. So, I mean, you really, what you really want with this type of bike is that power at the end, you know? Well, when, when you're really up there. My bike, kicks on my power doesn't come on till after 4,000 rpms up to like 65 yeah you want your street light yeah you notice that too yeah yeah, yeah. you have to be doing like 85 and that's when it, they really wake up then it wakes up yeah they really wake up at those high rpms 85 right? to like 115 but then bike handles like crap <laughs> and i feel like like this bike even even my, the road light like I, I feel like just the m8 alone like i feel like those bikes like those engines like they they like to be at those higher speeds, like. Especially the 114. The 107, they say it's a 10% difference, and it is, but the 107 is torquier on the lower end, lower. and the 114 is when you get up to the higher end, that's when yeah. you notice the difference. Because this bike, like, this bike loves to live, like, at 80, 85, well, 90. same like, thing, yeah. Like, it just lives there, like, it, it, that's where it's happiest, I feel. You know, anything above that, you're good. Oh, yeah, same thing with my Street Glide. But my Street Glide, I designed it because I could have went and did different cams and different heads, but I wanted it under warranty, I wanted a reliability. And when I'm loaded up with me, my wife, my tour pack, all my crap, at 85, 90, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. And then I can push it up to 115, no problem, with completely loaded down, you know, it's like well over a thousand pounds with me and her and all the crap on it. Yeah. And you, I mean, you've ridden it too. It, it just wants to go. Yeah, that, that, that bike runs really well. Now, I, that I being like said, like I really got, smooth too. One of, the, one of the guys I ride with has a stage, complete stage one on his CVO 117. Off the line, he beat me. You beat me with this bike off the line because my bike doesn't kick in until I get into higher. Yeah, I mean, your bike is also heavier than this one, so. Yeah, but he, he had a street glide 117. Oh, okay, okay. He took me off the line, but then by the time I was gonna blow by him, he's on his brakes. Yeah. So he goes, well, I beat you. I'm like, yeah, you beat me. Cause he goes, well, I said, my bike doesn't start moving till like 85. He goes, oh, I'm already on the brakes. I'm not going past that. Yeah. That's, that's where you have to see where you want your power. Do you want it low? Do you want it in the mid range? I kind of prefer mid range. Like on my older bikes, my twin cams, you know, me and my brother built our 95 inch bikes. We did the mid range cam because from 60 to hundred, we wanted to move. Yeah. And then after that, we weren't going over hundred. Our friend did a, a higher 243 cam, and he, at 100 and 110, he would start take pulling away from us. But uh, before that, he's like, my, dog, my bike's slow. Well, because you had the highest horse, you said to the guy you wanted the highest horsepower you could get, and that means putting a big cam in. But if you want your horsepower to come in lower, you had to get a mid-range cam or a low-end cam. Yeah. I mean, if, you, if you're towing, if you're doing like heavy touring with a lot of crap and a passenger, you kind of want the low end, but I prefer the mid-range. You see, so me, so here's the thing, even with these two bikes right here, when I do the cam on the low rider S, I want to do a horsepower cam because I want the I want the more power on the higher those yeah, higher PMs. Yeah, they probably everybody recommends like a torque cam <clears throat> on the road glide. Torque cam. I want a torque cam yeah. just because the bike is heavier it's and then more to move. And, and, and I need that torque bike to is move what moves first. you. Exactly. Horsepower is what you know. Exactly. So I need that bike to wake up at first. Well, when I really want that power at first, that that's yes. what I want. I want it instantly. 
Um, but the, that goes to show you how different, you know, even these two bikes are here um, when it comes to power as well. Well, it's a world of difference because even my 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 nineteen ninety ninety evolution, with, with a third, it's a stage four thirteen forty, but it's a little engine and it you know how fast that bike moves. The what? The, the nitro. The, yeah, that that bike that bike moves. Like it's that, only six hundred pounds. That bike really really surprised what it me is, when yeah. I first got on it because I'm like it was a it's a really old bike number one and it has the Evo and you, you know when it comes to power you can't really Evo's a great engine. Like I'm yeah. wrong. Sounds great amazing engine it'll last your lifetime but when you compare it to these newer engines like uh, is the power really there? especially the size you're talking it's an 80 80 cubic I, inch i know compared to a 114 so, cubic well, when, inch. when i got on that bike i was like what the fuck like this, this bike said it vibrates fast. but it fast this is like as fast as hell man yeah everybody says that even the guys i ride by because when i pull off a light i can get off a light quick but then they're gonna overpower me yeah. on the upper end that bike sounds good too yeah that bike sounds really good yeah all right so um Stage four. Yeah, it's like stage, stage four is... Stage four, we're talking about throttle body. Heads. Heads. And injectors. Yeah. Bigger injectors. And um, n now, perfect, because you have a, a stage four on, on, on your bike. Mm -hmm. uh, how is it? Oh, I love it. How does it perform? I love it. I, I thought about, like, some of the guys I ride with have, like, S&S, &S, 124, 128. Yours all Screaming Eagle, right? Mine's all Screaming Eagle, 114. I don't have even a fraction like you know I'm like oh I want to do this I want to do that but when you start doing all that it's all it's a lot more money and your reliability goes right out the window like right out the window. You talking about what when you go with other companies? Also when you start going into the higher compression pistons yeah. and you start going up in stages we'll have a discussion about that too because. So because uh, I'm pretty sure people are going to want to be asking like oh stage four well that must be a whole ton of money because you, even like with just a basic stage one you're you're it's... looking you're, you're looking at a pretty penny so stage four what are we talking about when it comes to money six grand but that's nothing compared to like I said the guys I ride with 128s 124 S&S kits ten thousand fifteen thousand dollars into so, so that you, you, all right so that makes me think real quick I'm like all right well for example like let's say if I wanted to do a stage four on my road glide right yeah it's gonna run me around six grand. Well, I, it would cost you less because you already have the tuner. Yeah, that's complete, I think. The tuner's like three hundred off. Yeah, but the pipes, that's fifteen hundred. Yeah. And then you have the um, the air cleaner. Oh no, you're using running a stock air cleaner. But it's, yeah, a, stock. It's, yeah, it's a heavy breather. It's, it's a heavy breather. So probably another forty five hundred, five grand. Yeah, but you're talking about that, like if... if but you're going to get a 40% no, increase no, in, in... No, no, but hold on, power. hold on, hold on. But if, if if I had the option, like if I... Not that I want to do a stage four or stage three on the bike, because I don't, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. But if I really wanted to go down that route where I wanted to get a lot of horsepower, if I'm talking about that much money, I'd rather come out of pocket and just get a 131. Also, yeah, I understand 131, but then you also start having, they've been having issues with the 131s with overheating and the thin the walls. So 128s that's, are a little better. Yeah, but that, that, that's the thing is that you gotta get a cooling fan for it. Yes. You know, like mm -hmm. as long as you get the what you need for it, you're fine. But I'm talking about like, if, if you're talking about money wise, if you're talking about four to uh, five to six grand, like I'd rather just get a 131 and just get everything that they're supposed to have with it. Yeah, because, well, the thing is, I didn't have that option when I built my bike. No, yeah, yeah, it wasn't out yet. I, I could do a 128 kit right now, but because mine was a 107 originally, so it's now it's a 114. If you have a 114, you can do a 131. But the thing is, where do you get to the point? Like, how much money do you want to spend to chase the horsepower? The guys I ride with, with the 128, 124 kit, their bikes are a, a couple seconds faster. And it depends on what range we're in that they're a couple seconds faster. Like you said, we all get to the same top speed and we, the bikes... Hence, why I would not <laughs> do a stage three, stage four. Hey, listen, if, if, if you want to go on the track and, and you want to yeah. build your performance bag or whatever it is, you know, by all means, every second counts. Yes. But for the average Joe who's on the road, who's, guess what? Everyone's cruising at six... Uh, 75, 75. That's 80. What we, when we do group rides, when we do group well, rides, we 75, maybe the leader's doing 80, but everybody's doing 75. Yeah. And, and, so and, we're and, at, and, we got 20 and, bikes at and, 75, and so me, where are we going? And if it's you and me, we're cruising at 85, 90 for yes. the most part. And that's it. But with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, why do you want to need all that extra, po extra power with all that extra money when it's really not going to be much of a difference by like a fraction 
what a second or two it depends on where you're like i said I, off the line i got beat by you i got beat by him on the top the, the top end the other guys beat me but they also have ten fifteen thousand dollars into their engines yeah they have chain drive conversions you got to beef up your transmission you got to beef up your crank there's a lot of it's shit lot, and your reliability man. starts going to it's shit. a lot and, and especially when, when you start messing with these like aftermarket parts and, uh -huh. and these other third-party companies where it's like yeah you get 160 180 horsepower but what good is it when you blow up in traffic there's so many issues man there's so many issues that people just don't look through it before they do it mm -hmm. so little minor issues that lead up to you blowing your engine yeah your transmission your your belt blow your belt right off your bike yeah that's happened my yeah. brother did it on his stock sportster it all depends on how you launch and how you know. Like, is it, like at the end of the day, like is it like I mean, you haven't had any issues with yours. No, not right. Get some wood. Knock on wood, wood but yeah. <laughs> whatever yeah. it is, knock somewhere. I mean, <laughs> thankfully you haven't had any issues with yours. No, but, but if I did, it's fully warranted. But you're also a very thoughtful rider, though. Like, like you know how to ride your bike. I don't hammer my bike, but I don't baby my bike. You don't, yeah, yeah, but you also don't don't beat on it, like like no. you know. I'm not doing burnouts or any of that crap. I'm not, you know, I don't have money like that to just blow my shit up. That's the thing. Yeah. It's like if if you're gonna be beating on your bike and doing this crazy shit, then it's, you're gonna be spending a lot of whole yeah, lot of yeah, whole, whole lot, lot of cash. cash, whole lot of cash. Yeah, because the more you do, like I said, we're probably gonna have to go into another discussion about what, how much gain horsepower you gain versus how much money you put out. I think the next video we'll, 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 yeah. we'll, end, we'll end with this, but the next video we'll talk about is it really worth it? Mm -hmm. We'll talk about money and how much exactly how much horsepower yeah. and torque and everything you're gonna gain. With we'll get each some one. examples, yeah. And we'll give you examples and everything. But me personally, I I only go up to stage two, and that's and, and even with that, because you know what it is with the M eights. Like you need an like a stage two to give you that real classic yeah. deep Harley sound. Davidson sound, man. Number one, you get the performance, but that sound that you're not gonna get from your M8 yet, you'll get it with, with a with a stage two for Can sure. Can I say it now? What I was gonna say, we well, save it for the other video, but what I would what I would do what? if I had to do it again, if I had to do it all over again, stage two. I wouldn't do anything beyond the stage two. And most of the guys I ride with that have the bigger bikes and everything built said the same thing. Beyond the stage two, you're wasting your money. I I, I think we'll leave it with that. <laughs> Until next time. Guys, uh, drop your thoughts down below. If you have done a ton of work to your bike, drop your thoughts down below. I want to know exactly what you've done to your bike. And how it's reliability. Reliability issues you're having or have had. Yes. And if you have added issues, obviously drop your thoughts yes, down below. Yes, I'd like to well. hear that. Um, but yeah, we're going to definitely be following up with the, the next video. It's going to be next week. So tune in for that. Um, Jerry, well, my beer's empty, but... I'm still happy. What? There. I was talking. Talking about babying over here. I'm talking. Baby. I was babying it. Granny in it. That's how Jerry babies his bike, the way he babies his beer. So. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Ask anybody <laughs> rides with me. I don't baby my bike like nah, that. No, he doesn't. Uh, I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. Like always, ride safe. Wait, no. I... Wait, what? I just messed up my own Yeah, damn. you messed up jam. <laughs> it's been too long. It's been happening since you go to another country. It happens. I was out of the country for, you know, a while. But yeah, let the force be with you. Ride safe and enjoy the ride, baby. Peace. <laughs>